commencing at the uh, 28th verse. And we'll read on down a little ways. Uh, down to maybe the 42nd verse or so. I know that's quite a bit to cover, but I want to cover it so that you can get the whole story this morning. Uh, if you would also mark your Bibles to the Gospel of John, uh, beginning in the uh, 12th chapter, uh, we'll just lift up a couple of verses for undergirding, mm -hmm. starting at verse 17 through 19 at the Gospel of John 12. So just mark it there. And you'll know when it's time to flip back and forth. So I'll put your program or something in there uh, so that we can make reference to it at the appointed time. Um, in the Gospel of Luke, that's 19, 28 through 42. And then the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. In Luke, we find these words. And it says, And when he had thus spoken... He went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage in Bethany. At the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering you shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. Mm -hmm. And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. The Lord. Amen. And they that were sent went. They went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the call, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the cult? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the cult. And they sat Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes, their clothes, in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Well, well. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, mm. All right, man. the stones would immediately cry out. Cry out. Uh, I never saw really, I never paid attention to the word immediately. <laughs> And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou had known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not be in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Uh, mm. I'll be uh, preaching, teaching, for just a few minutes, hopefully, <laughs> uh, from the subject, the X Factor. Amen. The X Factor. The commitment to Christ. Mm. As you know, for the past few weeks, we have been in the midst of a four-part series entitled The X Factor, which we have defined as that undefinable quality that someone possesses, possesses which causes them to stand out in a crowd. Mm. 
We have learned that forgiveness and repentance are two <coughs> manifestations of the X factor. And today we will learn how our commitment to Christ also serves as the main X factor. Amen. Today it will become very obvious as we consider our text as to who has the X factor mm -hmm. and who does not. Well, all right. Because commitment is one of those words that we use lightly. Mm -hmm. But we do not always follow through with that which we have said that we are committed to. Well. Therefore, before we go any further, let me define my terms. Go ahead. In the dictionary, commitment is defined as the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or to an activity. In another definition, oddly enough, I saw on a meme in Facebook yesterday, <laughs> Amen. It's all right. <laughs> it made sense to me. Amen. But listen to this. It defined commitment as staying loyal to what we said we were going to stay loyal to. All right. Well. well. Long after the mood we set it in. All right. There it is. Has long left. <laughs> all right now. All right. all right. Let that marinate. Yeah. 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 This definition really, really, really resonated with me because many of us made our commitment to Christ a right. long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. However, since then, a lot has happened. Some of us have grown weary. And others of us have gotten distracted and dissuaded from serving in the same way and being committed in the same way that we were committed to when we first said yes to Christ. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. It's happened. It's happened. Yes, sir. Still others of us may not actually ever fully have experienced the love, joy, and peace mm. that was promised when we first came to Christ. Mm. Well, right here. Come on, help somebody. Because, listen, some of us may not have come to Christ under the best conditions. You see, we came in the midst of a crisis. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Can I take my time? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I said it was go a ahead. few minutes, but can I have a few more? A few more minutes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That we came in the midst of a crisis. But in the, at once the crisis was over, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Well, no. well. then there was no more need for Christ. Oh. We took Christ Preach out of the crisis. Preach it in right. Preach it in you got, you got it. You oh, got it. listen, some came to Christ because that's what was expected of them by grandmama and them. Yeah. Uh, 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 Especially here at Tabernacle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I've heard some stories, man, and I'll tell you, when grandmama and them did not play, you had to come. And at some point in time, you better have said, I believe in Jesus, Amen. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, well, no. there are some who may not have ever come to Christ at all. Mm. all right. Now, I'm not talking about those in the highways and the byways. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. All right, now. Uh -oh. Where are they? Where are they? Maybe Where are they at? Should, uh, Where are they at? Amen. Amen. Right. sometimes you know, you're headed down the wrong road and just say recalculating. Amen. Maybe I should recalculate. Amen. Uh -huh. Recalculating. Uh, as a result, some were never really ever committed to Christ. And others of us are not as committed as we once used to be. Now, on the other hand, I will say that even though we are not as committed to Christ as we once used to be, some of us do find ourselves committed to other people other places. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Right. Careful, yes, careful. Yeah. Recalculating, amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Preach it to him. Preach it to him. Good. And some of us are committed to other things. For example, there are some of us who are committed to living our lives the way we want to live them. Well, 
Mm. And there are others who are committed to things that bring us some type of temporary enjoyment or satisfaction, like watching a certain TV show, like Scandal or Power, or other shows that people spend their time on. Now you going to mention it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Amen. Oh, oh, oh. You and me can still watch Scandal and Power. Amen. Amen. Now, some people are so committed to sports. Well, when Sunday morning has become a religion unto itself, where there's some who will decide to not come to church or may leave church early because their team is playing at 1 p.m. and they got to get to the couch. Yes, sir. Well, some have season tickets to FedEx Field, right. and they want to get there in time for not even the kickoff, but for the uh, tailgate. Amen. Amen. Don't want to miss those uh, hot dogs and sausages. Amen. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. I ain't saying there's anything wrong with watching TV. Nor am I saying that there's anything wrong with watching football or any other sport. However, when we are more committed to the Come things on. that bring us enjoyment, then we are to the one who brings us salvation. Yes. Right. Then that is an indication that we may need, need to make some adjustments because we are now committed to someone other than Christ. Come on. Come on. That's it. That's the bottom line. Yes. Now, there's something else we need to consider. If we're not committed Christians, then what exactly are we? All right. Yes, well, if we look to our text and as we consider the multitude that had gathered to witness the triumphant entry of the Lord Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, we find at least three categories of people that we can glean from and, and uh, as, the, as we used to say back in the day, get in where you fit in. Amen. In Luke 19, 37, it says, And when he was come nigh, right. even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. And in John 12, 17 and 18, it says, The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record. For this cause, the people, those people, they met him, they also met him, for that they had heard that they had done this miracle. Well, in other words, in the multitude, there were seer believers. All right. All right. Those seer believers right. believed because of what they had seen or what they had heard about. Right. You see, just a day or two before, the Lord Jesus Christ had raised Lazarus from the dead. Well. So for them, they had no problem praising God with a loud voice because they were caught up in the euphoria of the present moment after seeing and hearing about this fantastic thing that had just happened in their midst. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now let me ask you, how many of you know that a euphoria is very temporary and mm. as soon as the moment passes, well, our moods and our minds mm. begin to shift yes, back yes, to whatever they were focused on mm. before that wonderful thing that we had experienced passes by. Amen? Amen. Amen. I guess if B.B. King was still alive, he would say that uh, seer believers would say the thrill is gone. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Which is what happens after we have a very temporary experience <laughs> with Christ, and then we begin to shift right back to living and thinking the way that we thought and we lived before we experienced just there a brief is. moment in there the is. presence of God. Right. You see, for the sea of believers that day, this was a dangerous thing. Because after they had seen the great things that Jesus Christ had done, and after they had gotten caught up in the euphoria of the moment, they began to cry Hosanna. But their minds and their moods shifted right back 
from the fantastic moment uh, to a few days later where they were all, or many of them were crying, crucified. Uh, crucified. Yeah, all right. all so right. they went from Hosanna to crucify him in the Come matter on. of a couple of days. In other words, these seer believers were only temporarily, if that, committed to Christ, which really means that they were, were not committed to Christ at all. At all. Yeah. Now, let's not be too judgmental. Amen. We can get caught up in the story. Let's not be too judgmental. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Because there are many Christians in the body well, of Christ well. who are just like the sea of believers yes, sir. who are present in our help temple. Us, help us, help us. For example, there are some who come to church every Sunday and have a hallelujah good time. Yes, sir. All right. But by the time Monday morning rolls around, they have forgotten everything that they saw and heard on Sunday afternoon. At the same time, there are some who come to church on certain Sundays. Go ahead, anyhow. Go ahead, anyhow. I'm sorry. Amen. People will come on those certain Sundays so that they can get a refill of a spiritual euphoria. But then once that moment is over, then they go on in life operating on fumes. Until it is time or past due for their favorite choir to sing again. Go ahead. Go ahead in going down somebody's street. Thank you, Shelly. My keys are in the office. Amen. Consider whether we are committed to Christ or whether we are not. That's it. That's it. That's it. And if we're not, then it might be possible that we might be like those seer believers in our text who believed in the moment, but then when the real trial came, instead of standing up for Jesus, they yelled, crucify him. Also in the multitude that day, there were some Pharisaic naysayers. Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, uh, in Luke 19, 39, it says, And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude and said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Well, no. Also in John 12, 19, it says, The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. Now, before I go any further, let me define who the, who the Pharisees were. In the Blue Letter Bible, it declares that the Pharisees practiced self-righteousness where they were more concerned with the outward appearance of righteousness than they were concerned with the inward transformation of the spirit and the soul. I heard one clap, amen. <laughs> Listen, so for them, they were more committed to keeping the traditions and following the rules and the regulations than they were committed to following Christ. That's it. That's it. That's it. In fact, they could not find themselves to be fully committed to Christ because he was a threat to the power systems that they had set up for themselves. Mm, there you go, there you go, there you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Instead of embracing the supernatural power that the Lord Jesus Christ displayed, instead they challenged him every time they got a chance. Mm, well. So it was with them on that day. Now, they were embedded with the multitude whereby they were most likely saying negative things to anyone who would listen to them uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ or about what was happening in the midst. 
now. Listen, Tabernacle, I know that no one here today can identify with these Pharisaic nations. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. Some people smile and some people hate, amen. <laughs> Listen, 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 listen. They, they would go about saying to others, you know how people do, they, you know, give you a little nudge and a little whisper. You know, say, oh, that Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he ain't nothing. Amen. Well, no. And listen, 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 listen. There are many people in many churches who are like these Pharisaic naysayers in our text. They're the ones who shoot down change or speak against anyone who does not support what they support or speak against anyone who does not do what they want them to do. Now, I would say that these Pharisaic naysayers are dangerous to the church because if not careful, their influence may serve as one of the reasons why so many people get turned off to church and why so many people get turned off to Christ. Now, finally, in our text, in Luke 19, 28 through 36, we find two dedicated disciples who had the X factor of being committed to Christ. In verse 28, it reads, And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem, and it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye you shall find a cult tied, whereon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And, it may, and, it, and if any man ask you, Why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, Because the Lord has need of him. And they went as they were sent, uh, they went their way and found even as he had said unto them. Now, in verse 33, it says, And as they were loosing the cult, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the cult? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the cult, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Now, listen, we find these three qualities, and these three qualities in this uh, pericope of scripture, we find that these, uh, these uh, uh, dedicated disciples had the X factor because they were committed to Christ. First things first, let me remind you, our working definition of commitment is staying loyal to what we said we were going to stay loyal to long after the mood in which we set it in has long left us. In our text, we can determine if we're loyal to Christ if... Number one, we are close enough to Jesus to hear God's word. And number two, we are willing to do what God has instructed us to do. And number three, we are willing to make a sacrifice for Christ. Uh, let's take the first ones first. Uh, we are close enough to Jesus to hear God's word. In verse 29 it says, And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering you shall find a cult tie whereon yet never man sat loose him and bring him hither. We see here for the two disciples, the only way that they were able to hear what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying was because they were close up to him. They were right there walking with him. And as a result of walking with him, he spoke to them. He spoke to them and gave them some instructions to go forth and to do the work that he had for them Amen. to do on that day. All right. You see, All right. they were close enough to hear his voice. And for us, listen, uh, even though we cannot see the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, we certainly can see the Lord Jesus Christ in his word. Amen. We're listening to the words of Jesus. Amen. We're thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been singing about Jesus. We gave our confession. We believed in our hearts and we confessed with our mouths the Lord Jesus that he was raised from the dead. And so therefore, we do believe that there is a Jesus. And, and just because we can't see him in the flesh does not mean that he is not here. The Bible says, the Lord, I will be with you always, even to the end of this age. And so we've got a God who even though we can't see him, we know that he's here. We know that he's here because he wakes us up every morning. And it's because of God who breathes the breath of life into these bodies. It's because of him that we're able to live, move, and, and have our being. Yes, there is a God. There is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and if we would just draw nigh unto him, the Bible says, draw nigh unto him, and he will draw nigh unto us. And, and when we draw nigh unto him, and when he draws 
denying to us, then you begin to speak to us and, and then begin to show us uh, which way we should go, where we'll hear a voice behind our ear saying, this is the way. Turn thee to the left or turn thee to the right. Go forward. Go straight. Go up or go around whatever we're facing in life. We've got the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us. And so it's hallelujah. That did not happen. And that means that we're men and women are most miserable and that we have no hope of our salvation. I begin to head of myself. Come on. That's all right. But we can be close enough to the Lord Jesus Christ in order to hear his voice. And it's through prayer. It's through praise and through studying the word of God. James 4, 7 and 8 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Oh, you know how we're doing right now. Oh, the devil's chasing me down. The devil got me down. And if we were flip books, we'd say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Then it goes on to say, we get happy there. But then he gives us some more instructions. He says, cleanse your hands. Mm -hmm. And then he labels it, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Right. We cannot be committed yes. to Christ right. and be double-minded. Yeah. For the Bible says the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Either we're committed to Christ or we're not committed to Christ. Either we're committed to going and staying in the presence of God through prayer, praise, and the word, or we're not. Uh, so the question is, what exactly is it that we're committed to? If we don't submit our hearts, if we don't submit our soul, if we don't submit our minds to God, and if we don't resist, and if we don't draw nigh to God, then we will find that we will not be able to hear and know the voice of God and what he is trying to tell us to do at a time such as this. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, and if we cannot hear God, then how in the world can we be committed to God? All right. That's it. That's the question. I had a brief conversation yesterday. And it was very brief. But, but, but the, the, as the conversation went, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, it went something like, I wonder why some people don't serve uh, or are not committed to ministry. Well, yeah. well, listen, how can we be committed to ministry if we're not committed to Christ? Hello. 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 Well, I got something else to do, amen? Listen, 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 listen. The second thing is that we have to be willing to do what God has instructed us to do. Amen. In our text it says, saying, the Lord Jesus Christ saying, go. Just one word, go. Go ye into the village over against you, into which at your entering you shall find a colt tied wherein yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because... The Lord has need of him. You see, uh, we find that the Lord Jesus Christ simply just gave one simple instruction. He didn't have to get all deep with it. He didn't have to get all, uh, get all kinds of explanations. He didn't have to pull out his uh, thesaurus or his dictionary. He didn't have to pull out his concordance or anything like that. He didn't have to Google anything. He didn't have to uh, ask anyone anything. He just simply gave one instruction, go. He wanted them to go and do what God had to do at that time because uh, uh, you see, scripture had to be fulfilled. The prophet Zechariah had prophesied that the Lord Jesus Christ would enter in on a donkey and so therefore this is the donkey that the God, the God we serve had prophesied will come to pass. You see, when we are in God's uh, uh, mission and doing what God has called us to do, then God will begin to fulfill that which he purposed for our lives before the foundation of the world itself was formed. You see, when we get where God is, we will then find what God has for us. Amen. You know, we've been missing God and looking for God and, and seeking God and, and not being able to find God and hear God because we have not committed ourselves to just simply go. James 1, 22 through 24 says, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only.
only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word only, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. How many of y'all, including myself, primp in the mirror and make sure everything is all right, and then you, you stand there a while, then you get the profile, then you get the other profile, then you turn around, then you ask your spouse and your children how I look, baby, and you hallelujah, you say, I know you look fine, amen, and then we get in our car, and then we get a little bit concerned because maybe our hair is not the way we wanted to be. In other words, we forgot what manner of person we was just a few minutes ago when we looked in the mirror and got a confirmation that we were doing all right. Amen. You see, the same thing happens when we look in the Word of God. We look in the Word of God and we find what God is saying to us about our lives and how we ought to go forward and what we ought to do to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to fulfill our purpose at a time such as this. But we look at it for just a second, for maybe a second, and maybe a minute, maybe five minutes, or maybe we don't look at it at all, and then we turn away from it, and we then wonder why everything is falling apart in our lives. We have to be willing to do what God has instructed us to do, but we cannot do what God has instructed us to do unless we know what God has instructed us to do. Thirdly and lastly, we have to be willing to make a sacrifice for Christ. In verse 32 it says, and they that were sent went. So Jesus said go, and they said yes, and they went their way and found even as the Lord Jesus Christ has said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt. And they set Jesus thereon. And as they went, they spread their clothes in the way. In other words, as they went their way, and as they begun to uh, accomplish the purpose and the mission for which God had, uh, had ordained for that moment in their lives, these two uh, dedicated disciples made a sacrifice to Christ because they had that X factor of commitment to Christ. All right. You see, there was no one else around. Listen to this. I know that in just in a few minutes, we're going to pass out some palms. We're going uh, to wave them in the air. Amen. We're going to fold them up in the crosses. We're going to put them in our cars. We're going to put them in our Bibles. We're going to put them in our homes. And so, uh, you know, we, we realize what today is all about. You know, it's all about the waving of palm branches and all of that. Uh, when the great multitude got together and they began to sing hallelujah and hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord uh, forever. And so we find now that, that, that uh, this is before that happened. Then, listen, when this happened, no one else was around. Listen, it says here that, uh, that, that they were, they, in verse uh, uh, 35, it says, and they brought, uh, they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And he, as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Well, we're thinking that uh, everybody's singing Hosanna. But listen, in verse 37, it says, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice. So that means that uh, these two disciples were so committed to Christ, they were so close yeah. to Christ, right. that they were willing to make a sacrifice even when no one else was acknowledging yeah. the sacrifice that they were making. Uh, you see, God. listen, listen, listen. There they is. just wanted the Lord Jesus Christ to be comfortable sitting on that old donkey, amen? Right. They took their clothes off their backs. And they put it upon the donkey so the Lord Jesus Christ would be able to have at least a halfway comfortable ride on, down on. that mountainside on, as they were moving on paint into, uh, uh, hallelujah, the final victory. We find that they were just concerned that the Lord Jesus Christ was being ministered unto even though they knew that he was the Lord of Lords and, and the King of Kings. They still made the sacrifice to take their garments and put it on that old donkey and say, you know what, Jesus? Even if I ain't got my clothes on, I'm going to make sure you got a way to get where you want to go because you have been so good to me that I'm just going to serve you. Even though nobody else is looking, I'm going to serve you anyhow because
to the power of the resurrection that the Lord Jesus Christ received that day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice who might be living in the midst of a dead situation, yes, yes. the God that we serve mm -hmm. can meet you right in the midst of your dead situation yes, and bring you back to life again. Yes, sir. For the Bible says that he will quicken us in our mortal bodies mm -hmm. with his power and with his spirit. Yes. Yes. That relationship begins with our confession, mm -hmm. our commitment to Christ. Yes. Will we receive the fullness of Christ? Yes. Will we say what we mean and we mean what we say? Yes. Will we say to the Lord God, I just surrender all. I give you my heart. Yes. Yes. I give you my soul. Yes. I give you my situation. I give you my family. Yes, yes. I give you my health. Yes. I give you my finances. Yes. I give you my entire life. Yes. And just know that what we give to the Lord, yes. we get life in the Lord. Amen. 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 So we yes. give up our yes. lives for him. Yes. Yes. And what we get from him is his life. Yes. So if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who's looking to be resurrected in your life, to start afresh and anew. So the Bible says if a man or woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Yes. Old things well, have passed yes, away. And behold, behold, all things have become new. Yes, yes. Aren't you ready for the new you? Aren't you ready for the new you? The new you in Christ. Yes. Where no matter what's happening in our lives, we can have blessed assurance in yes. knowing that God is with us and that he would yes. never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. Yes. The question is, are we going to leave him and forsake him? And if we have at any point in time, then you know what? That's what grace is for. Hey. I'm just glad about thank God's you. grace and his mercy. Thank amen. 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 It's not a guilt trip, amen. amen. It's a guilt amen. remover, amen. amen. When there's no guilt, there is therefore now no condemnation. Mm. There is no condemnation uh, if a man be in Christ and if he walk after the Spirit. So listen, is there one who's willing and ready and able to say, I surrender all? Would you stand to me? If you're able.